Thank you, councillors. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm standing here today not to represent any particular body, but just as an individual that happens to live in Darlington. I've lived here for just over 30 years now, and I love this town. And an integral part of that town is our Memorial Hospital. Now, I haven't got a prepared speech. I'm afraid this is from the heart. One of the things I did yesterday, I spent an exhilarating couple of hours looking at spreadsheets published by the NHS on performance of different trusts. So I thought, well, hang on, if we're going to talk about this, let's get some comparative data. So, for example, Council Dolman Darlington in December had 10,593 people that it saw. I noticed that Gateshead had 7,549. Sunderland, 8,164. So the Darwin and Darlington NHS Trust are actually seeing more people than any of the other trusts appear to be. So why are we being picked out to have our maternity hospital, sorry, our memorial hospital taken away from us? One of the other things they quoted on these spreadsheets was the number of patients that waited more than four hours to be seen. The figure for Gateshead was 504. The figure for North Tees, 658. The figure for County Diamond Darlington was 2,360. That means already the performance of the Durham and Darlington Trust is not as good as any of the others. And yet apparently the way to solve the problem is to shut down the memorial. Now, I've got no medical background. I spent all of my working life in manufacturing industry. I've been very lucky that I've been able to devote time to our SOS campaign. And when you saw Jenny plonking down a big thick chunk of petition forms, I've probably been responsible for a number of those. But I've been doing more than just going out in Darlington. I've been going out in places that other people have talked about today. Places like North Allerton, places like Catherine, <coughs> Barda Castle. People over there are absolutely terrified. Just talking to ordinary people in the street. They say to me, what happens if we get a heart attack? What happens if we get a stroke? They talk to me about the golden hour. And how critical it is that you get care in the first hour. I know it's been referred to by other people. I mean, I've, talk, I've talked to Gerald about it. I've talked to people over on this side as well. One thing that has been nice is that I've seen a lot of non-political activity going on. There's one last thing that I would leave you with. I watched <coughs> a Look North report on local health services. And there were two figures that stuck out in my mind. They talked about the occupancy of beds over the winter in the memorial. The target figure is no more than 85%, as I understand it. But at Darlington, the figure was 90.03%. But of course, that won't matter because we're all going to be able to flood into James Cook. Guess what, the, guess what the percentage was for James Cook? Their percentage occupancy of A&E beds was 95.75%. So where the hell are the 300,000 people that depend on the memorial going to go in the future because it can't be to James Cook because they haven't got the capacity? Thank you.